some arrangement here. All the paper, right? The mitten paper should be present uh, within these two weeks. The first, uh, the first will be dated November twenty-first. There are two paper. The first two paper, okay. And uh, the other two paper will be presented uh, on on November twenty eighth. So, got it? Yeah. The first two paper, okay. This the meat. Yeah. Oh, this uh, the meat and the meat and uh, paper presentation. And the final is the project presentation, project presentation. However, for this uh, final final uh, project presentation, all the date, not uh, this date, uh, December December twelfth is only for the early living student. Okay, so all the other students who want to stay longer, you can present the, the final project. In January, okay. In January, got it? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now let's talk about expatriation. Expatriation. Okay. This uh, international alliance and uh, local national. Yeah. Friend, uh, parent, country national are transferred to another country to work in a foreign subsidiary or other type of operation uh, of the MAE for more than one year. They are generally referred to as the expatriate or international dining. And when they return home, they are referred to the repatriate. Now you got the expatriate and repatriate. Okay. In general, this purpose can be combined into two broad categories. The first is the demand driven. The second is the running driven. When a monitor company wants to uh, set up a foreign subsidiary, uh, he needs to assign uh, uh, the subsidiary CEO or a professional, engineer, manager, Right from the home country, okay? So, this is the demand driven purpose, right? This includes using the internal dining as the general manager, director for a subsidiary startup and to roll out new product and for technology transfer, right? And solve problem or perform function tasks such as accounting, sales, and manufacturing and for organizational control, right? right? So this is the first category of the uh, expatriation, yeah, for the demand driven. Because you need to transfer technology, transfer the management know-how, transfer this uh, organizational culture from the home country, from the headquarters to the foreign subsidiary. The second, Type is the learning driven purpose. This includes the management, development, transfer of knowledge, and the socialization of lo local uh, into the corporate culture and value. Okay. So after you set up your uh, foreign subsidiary, yeah. and when it go and become mature more mature, then you would like to uh, promote the local talent to become right the upper level manager. Then you can transfer this uh, local talent uh, to your headquarters, right? To headquarters. Or you want to develop your home country's um, talent 
to become the global talent, you can uh, assign them, right, to work for one or two years in a foreign subsidiary. Let him learn the, and gather international experience, right? So, yeah, I, some students come from my global talent center, right? Yeah, one of the students, uh, uh, he uh, was assigned to have internship in China, in China. And when he come back this week, he asked me whether he can stay in that internship company or not. Or he should come back here to have another turn of the training, right? And then go to Shanghai. There's another company who want to hire him. Okay. So, yeah, in my opinion, I will uh, provide him this the learning, the learning need, right? Learning need. Because he, he just got his uh, master's degree, right? and come to my global talent center. Okay. So learning is very important. Learning. Uh, uh, no, my, my son uh, has arrived in uh, Dubai and so oh, it's hot, you know? Hot and hot. <laughs> you know, a hot job, a hot weather. Okay, and I, I tell him, Learning. Learning is very important. Learning. Right. When you were, were assigned to work in a foreign country, learning. Because you are so young, right? When HCM, host country national, host country national are relocated to the headquarters of the parent firm, they are generally referred to as impatriate. Impatriate. Right? And when the ME hires a citizen of the country other than the parent country or the country of the subsidiary to work in one of its foreign subsidiary, this person has been typically referred to as a third, third country national, TCN. Uh, for example, uh, yeah, that's my son's situation, right? He's a Canadian, right? right. And was assigned to, right? Uh, to walk, uh, to walk in Dubai, uh, act as the managing director in the CEO office, right? And this this uh, company is the China uh, biotech company. So <laughs> he's the TCN, right? He's the TCN, right? And there are many different options available to MES. A local high or national. Right? Local high. Yeah. Many times uh, uh, young, uh, uh, young, uh, uh, I would say young talent, right? They find a job in China, but uh, but the modern company or China company or Chinese company, they want to use the local high. Not transfer them from Taiwan and work there. They will pay more, right? No. He said, you should come to Shanghai and become the local high. So they pay them at the local level. Local level. <laughs> so, you know, that's the local level. Uh, for M for MBA student, international level, uh, it cost uh, twelve thousand RMB every month. Twelve thousand RMB. But for the local, right, the local high, only eight thousand RMB monthly, right? And uh, you had experience there, right? Only eight thousand for MBA. The new MBA. However, if the international, well, okay, higher, right? More than the twelve thousand, that may be every month. Yeah, uh, there 
are many uh, different type of uh, expatriate, the domestic uh, internationalist, right? Employee who never leave home but conduct international business with customers, suppliers, and colleagues in other countries. Okay, it's just work in uh, the home country's headquarters, right? And managing the international business. International commuters, employees who live in one country but who work in another country. Okay, like the the Hong Kong people and you know, commute. They commute across border and work in Shenzhen. Only forty minutes from Hong Kong to Shenzhen, right? Across the border. Yeah. These are international commuters. Or in Canada, right? right? Canada. From Vancouver from Vancouver to Seattle. Two hour. Two hour drive. Okay. Frequent business trip usually include travel to a variety of a country or con con continent to visit any site or customer. Uh, many Taiwanese high-tech company uh, executive, right? The executive in this uh, high-tech company, they need to travel, frequent business travel to contact the global customer, okay? To visit the sub international supplier, supplier, okay? Short-term international dining, yeah, L less than one year, but more than a few weeks, uh, one year. Yeah. So now, uh, more um, cold. Uh, now the China and Taiwan become more integ integrate integrated in terms of the economy development. So more and more uh, manager will be assigned to have a shortened task, right? Shortened task. International Adani last more than one year and include full uh, relocation. Localized employee, this normally refers to the situation where an employee is sent to work in a foreign country but hired as a local employee. An international designee who is the converted to a permanent local status and uh, once the assignment period is over. Many Taiwanese high-tech company, China high-tech company, they will set up the uh, subsidiary in Silicon Valley, U in USA, and assign their uh, senior manager or a CEO, right? Work in USA, right? And then they become this uh, localized employee. After a period of time, or their family, right? Uh, live there, and then this one got the PR, the PR, and become the localized. Okay. Many Chinese uh, Chinese manager, Taiwanese manager, Korean manager, yeah, they become this localized employee in USA. Even if you want to work in Taiwan, <laughs> maybe, right? After a period of time, you become the localized employee. <laughs> Permanent head of the globalist who spent essentially, essentially their whole career in international management moving from one lo locale to another. Okay, uh, uh, I will introduce some internship, temporary immigrant. These are workers brought into a French home country to work for short, right? Yeah, so maybe uh, uh, <coughs> some international, uh, some international, uh, from IB degree or uh, no uh, IB degree program, uh, they asked me to find this internship for them in China. In China, uh, and after they got a degree, this China company were high, were high. Right. So some uh, Russia student, some <coughs> East Europe student, yeah, they work in China. <coughs> of the internship and last semester 
I introduced uh, two students, uh, internship students, to have internship in Taiwan, in Taiwan. And yeah, <coughs> this company went to hire them. <laughs> and still the company asked me, for any mainland Indonesia student, <laughs> yeah, now they want to expand the market in Indonesia, in mainland, so they want to hire the MBA student, right? And if you can who know Taiwanese and <coughs> speak Chinese, right? And yeah, and English, right? So they can work for this company in his own country. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to introduce too, too many uh, types. So technology was made it possible to conduct a global business in new way. Firms are more likely to use domestic internationalist, virtual assignment, and cross border team, returning and a second generation expatriate and outsource offshore and just in time international employee. Because this the the long term expatriation costs more, right? So all this uh, become uh, more available. When problem with the high cost of traditional expatriate retention or repatriate, increasing resistance from employees and their family to foreign assignment continue to go uh, unresolved. So firm rely more heavily on short-term assignment, extended business trip, commuter, local high, returning, and retiree. Okay. Uh, now, let's talk about the uh, uh, staffing choice, right? In creation for the MB. Uh, it's ISM that should be tasked with providing the expertise and support to the rest of the firm to ensure that all these variety of global manager and employee develop necessary international competence. No matter what type of the expatriation, ISR people need to provide to develop all these expatriate manager. This uh, talent become the global talent and learn the international competence, okay? <coughs> yeah, let me talk about how to uh, select, yeah, I will I use this. How to select the expatriate manager, okay? First, you need to analyze the job, right? The job requirement. Technical requirement, if we uh, went to the foreign subsidiary, act as the R&D professional, right, engineer professional, yeah, or managerial responsibility, or he act as the CEO executive in the foreign subsidiary, and you should know the cultural requirement, very uh, great cultural differences between home country and the host country, okay. And you should ask, I understand our country assignment, okay. This uh, federalist assignment is the great value. Yeah, very important to learn, learn the experience there. The political, legal, social, economic situation, there are, there are some risk, a risk or great differences in this uh, institutional context, okay. So, and you should know the social institution any, for example, any university, any uh, 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 hospital, or no, for the for the expatriate manager's need, okay. And the standard of living, yeah, Shanghai will be right more uh, convenient, right, than Queensland uh, uh, or than other city, okay. Physical environment. Okay, the shopping mall. You know, many internet major like to work in Singapore, Hong Kong, right? Because the this uh, physical environment whether it's okay or not. But if you want to transfer to Japan, <laughs> what problem come up to you? Japan? How about the earthquake? How about the tsunami? You know, <laughs> maybe how about a nuclear? Uh, 
Okay. And then, now, you need to evaluate. Evaluate the candidate. Right? You need to evaluate uh, availability, job ability, personality. Personality is very important, right? If you are uh, uh, a model <laughs> mindset, okay, not good. Career status, okay, desire for assignment, family situation, <laughs> whether they can uh, uh, cooperate with this expatriation, and the gender, uh, the language skill, prior experience, okay, and then you should prepare it, prepare the candidate and their family, okay, pre assignment site visit. Provide this uh, short-term uh, visit, okay? And the uh, job country orientation, uh, cultural orientation, language training, commission and benefit tax, housing counseling, and uh, counseling by uh, repatriate, local sponsorship. Okay, and adequate, this is very important, right? Very important. Yeah. Adequate length of assignment. Yeah, whether it's the adequate right, for this uh, candidate, right, to learn, to learn more, right, or to to complete, to complete his task. <coughs> Repatriation preparation, yeah, very important. Uh, nobody expect he and go and cannot <laughs> return. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, sponsor back home, career uh, counseling, and the cultural reorientation. Okay, and then the successful uh, expedition, experience. So now please come to uh, this uh, question. This uh, question. Look here. Now, if you are given a p opportunity in your next job. To go on and extend it for in us. Sorry. No, I will change. <laughs> I change. You are given opportunity to work in China, right? In your next job. To work in China. What type of support program would you expect or ask for from IHR? No? No. Yeah, you will be a a sign, yeah, no matter internship or no matter the short term or more than one year expatriation. Okay, what type of support program would you expect or ask for? Huh? What idea come up to you? Okay, uh, don't say, yo, you go. Yes, <laughs> so, so brave. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, what kind, what type of support program you expect, ask for from the company, okay? Yeah, so please uh, uh, come back 11.10, 11.10, it's okay? Right? 11.10, okay? 11.10 and prepare your uh, presentation. China.